Welcome to a new lesson, Introduction to Scoop. In this lesson, we would learn how data is imported in and exported out of Hadoop. Scoop is a tool designed by Pache to efficiently ingest the data into Hadoop and export data from Hadoop. A more appropriate description would be, Apache Scoop is a tool designed for efficiently transferring bulk data between Hadoop and structured data stores, such as relational databases. Let's look at this definition from a closer point of view. It does it efficiently by doing the copy process in parallel, as we see with every Hadoop ecosystem component. They use the power of parallelism by effectively utilizing the MapReduce framework. This scoop can transfer the data from databases to HDFS, which is called as import, and from HDFS to external storage spaces, which is known as export. The data sources are generally relational databases, but they can be of different kind of structured stores. For example, data dumps in a flat file can as well be imported through Scoop. Only important thing is that data should be structured in the form of a repeatable structure as rows. Hence, we see in the definition that term structured data store is used. Now, when the data is getting imported in HDFS, we can set target destination to Hive or HBase warehouse directly, or we can place it in HDFS itself. Then we have an option of controlling the format of data import as well between delimited text, Avro, and sequence files. In Scoop, we just specify the command to tell Scoop the direction of the movement of data, source of the data, the destination of the data, and the format in which it is to be copied. So if you understand this diagram here on your screen, you'd automatically understand all the commands possible in Scoop and what are functions you can perform with Scoop and you can form all the Scoop commands automatically. Just one thing which Scoop performs apart from the data transfer is that while transferring the data from the database to HDFS, it reads the records one by one. Behind the scene internally, it creates a class which maps to the record in the table. For example, if a table has numeric column, say ID, and string column as name, it would create a class record as shown. This class is a byproduct of the transfer of the data which Scoop does. This is produced by Scoop and can be used if you would be performing MapReduce operations on the data thus transferred. Hence here you see that it is important the data is structured or else Scoop won't be able to perform any imports. So all in all, if you understand this diagram on the screen, then you understand the whole idea of the Scoop and what are functionalities you can do with it. So let us look at import statements and understand how these parameters are specified in Scoop. Here you see a command to import data from the table test. Scoop import double hyphen connect and then there is a complete JDBC URI and double hyphen username and following that is the value and double hyphen table and the table name then a single hyphen m to specify the number of maps to one. In Scoop double hyphen is used to pass the tool specific arguments which would help us to communicate Scoop the source of data destination of data and how to handle the data. Single hyphen is used for the generic options such as specifying the number of map tasks to carry the operation or to set some property value explicitly by hyphen D option which we have already seen in the course and so on. So by double hyphen connect we specify the JDBC URI string which looks like the follows. It has the driver information the server hosting your database and the database. Then we pass the username and the table information. Because we didn't specify the target location, this would be copied to a default location in HDFS. All these parameters can be specified using a file as well. We can use option file and pass the file which contains all the arguments and the value as shown. Next, let us look at a few parameters that can be used in Scoop. I have categorized the options in according to their functionality just to make them easier to remember. In this lesson, we would see the options and in the next, we would see the usage of those commands. First, let us look at basic options 
which would almost be there all the time in an import command. Double hyphen connect argument is where we can specify the JDBC URI. M or number of mappers for number of mappers and table for the table name. Then when the data is getting imported from the source database, it can happen that we may not need the complete data on the table. We can filter the data by using the following options as shown. By specifying the argument query, we can specify an SQL query and only the result of the query would be imported. Similarly, we can use where argument to specify the where clause and the column argument can be used to specify the column which we want to retrieve. The combination of column and where can be put in a query clause where we can specify both the column names as well as the where clause. So in a way, query is equivalent to both column and where put together. Now let's look at the import format. We can import the data as Avro or as binary sequence files or as delimited text. With the delimited text files, you can control the delimitations as well by using the arguments field terminated by and lines terminated by. Then we can control the target directory as someplace in HDFS using target DIR or the Hive data warehouse using Hive import. Or we can directly create a table in HBase using HBase create table. When using scoop in practical scenarios, a lot of time you would see incremental imports are needed. There would be a data source which would accumulate the data and we would need to transfer the data newly accumulated to a specific location in HDFS. There are two modes in which the incremental imports can be done and that is specified using the increment argument. First mode is the append mode and the second mode is the last modified mode. Append mode is used when importing a table which has a column which is constantly incrementing with every row added. For example, the sales ID which might increase by one for every sale that happens in a store and the sale might be representing a record in that case. So you specify the column containing the row ID with check column and scoop would import rows where the check column has a value greater than the one which is specified by last value. An alternate table update strategy supported by scoop is last modified mode. You should use this when rows of the source table may be updated and each update will set the value of the last modified column to the current timestamp. Rows where the check column holds a timestamp with more recent than the timestamp specified with last value are imported. Then there are these special options related to Hive imports which controls the various Hive options such as specifying the Hive installation, specifying the directory in Hive warehouse, control over delimitations and control over partitions and so on. I have attached a document along with this lesson for a quick referral of these options. Please go through it once. In the next lesson, you would see a few commands in Scoop to build a little more understanding about the import commands in Scoop.